Episode 5, My Own Steel. After defeating the level 1 boss and winning the tournament, although it wasn't really a tournament. Whose backstory is this? Teacher. Is this the demon we just defeated, but his first kill way back in the beginning? If that's true, imagine how responsible the teacher would feel for not finishing him off. The show still hasn't really made clear what its stance it will be on killing demons, as far as Tanjiro is concerned. Because the whole, you know, ooh, moral heart and goodness and everything is great, but it's no joke when you, like, don't finish the job and then they go on to do horrible things. You saw the teacher's face close that circle. He looks sad. Is this demon? Demon backstory? Is it a demon that was a sister that ate a brother? You can spell people's emotions too. Well, there's some compassion at least. Let him be reborn as a boy who isn't eaten by his sister. That too. Oh, is that- that's all of them, right? They look so awesome with their cute little masks. But they're not gone, are they? Uh, like, does this mean they are... ...disappearing off into the fog? They're kind of cool characters. So they definitely flipped that demon on its head. It's quite the arc that just happened in two episodes. I mean, we've been focusing on it almost exclusively through Tanjiro's eyes, but there's a whole lot of backstory in there. So much so that I almost wish there was more time dedicated to it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Right, but this isn't over. That was just one, but what a start. Yeah, oh well, this one is not turning into a human again. At first I was thinking that it seems a little bit incongruous for him to be wanting to revert his sister back to humanity while also killing humans. Because if it is possible, it might be possible for all of them, right? But then again, it doesn't really matter that they're demons. What matters is that he's fighting for his life. I mean, if they're humans, it would be no different. We can see he doesn't enjoy it. I'm waiting and expecting the demons that are not just these like, you know, flesh-hungry, insane beings, but instead are level-headed, cool, collected, actual villains, if you know what I mean. Back in the save room. Would you like to save your game? That is not a lot of people. Speaking of, like, a lot happening, untold stories, etc. He's picking up so many things so quickly. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Got it. Definitely remember all those. Maybe he already has a cool sword. Hey, there we go. Finally, the birds are on our side. The girls are pretty badass. I've been thinking about crows ever since I read this story in the news a long time ago about this girl who had a bunch of crows inside of her house and was feeding them and how the crows developed something of a relationship with her and ended up like bringing her gifts every day and not like bird gifts, like actual human gifts, like jewelry and things like that, if I remember correctly. Apparently they're super intelligent and just me and my wanting to do everything and being jealous of anyone who has a cool experience that I don't have. If I ever live in a place where there's a gaggle of crows, definitely gonna feed them. That's one of those to-do things that's been sitting on the list for a while. I hope the crow is cool. Not just like a mailman. You're doing it wrong. That's kind of cute though, having a sparrow. Getting real Bakugo vibes here. <laughs> oh my god, wow. Imagine that doing this to the, this twin, that's reserve judgment. And his total character. I don't like this action, but a little more assertive than Deku. He's got some extra power, just naturally. He could just be really athletic, but I feel like there's something else. Something more. He's got the hard head, the strong grip, powerful nose. Look at my rocks. This is my rock collection. It's unrelated to the task. Just wanted to show you guys. This guy's ready to give up. Although some people use that as a way of coping. There's a sort of complaining that's self-defeating, but I also feel like there's a kind of self-complaining that's prep. 
It's like measuring your own expectations, looking at the worst case scenario so you can sort of deal with that emotionally before proceeding. I don't know. There's just so many ways of conceptualizing things. I think the important thing is still going to come down to action. If this helps him become a great demon slayer, then, you know, more power to him. If it gets in his way, that's a different story. It's sort of like Professor Oak in Pokemon. With less colorful choices. This is another myth-like thing. It's like Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, too. Choosing the cups. I sort of love just that concept. These moments of kind of a life-defining choice represented by objects. It's a strange world. Strange organization. I guess you gotta be strange to go into this kind of work. Everyone's gonna have a story. I was thinking about that exact thing recently talking to a friend of mine who lives in Korea because we we're talking about how we're weird and I was saying how like of course we're weird <laughs> like the fact that we met each other living abroad in a foreign country in the same foreign country sort of pre-selected us in a way to one be somewhat different from the norm at least in that way but also to have certain similarities in common not only with each other but basically everyone we meet in the same position that's a really weird thing about life like you think you understand the range of humanity but the truth is most of our worlds are very narrow and the people we meet are going to be largely selected to be people who are very similar to us because they occupy the same sort of niches because they made similar choices to end up in the same place you are more or less but every now and then you meet someone in a totally different world and it's a shock it's like they don't even play by the same rules or live in the same game it can be so jarring that i think sometimes the instinct is to just write them off as quickly as possible like what a weirdo you know and move on with your life but a lot of the time i feel like there are actually insights in that moment it's like a, another dimension, in a sense, revealing itself. People are all more similar than they are different, of course, but the lessons and I guess the, the intrigue lies in the differences. But anyway, while the Demon Slayer cadets will have differences in sort of base personality, there are going to be these very, very striking similarities that brought them all here. They're all going to have these sort of unique experiences, probably, which probably includes a lot of tragedy. <laughs> It's not looking good for this whole like human demon relationship thing. But as it goes, it's sort of fine. You know, she's sort of like hanging out, taking naps. He took a lot of abuse on that mountain. Part of it was emotional, just realizing that this is just gonna be your life. But it gets easier. First day to new jobs always the hardest, you know. Oh, she woke up. I heard that it was time for me to re-enter the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all this warmth. Trying to hide those tears, but I see them. I see the tears behind the mask. <laughs> it's it's kind of hilarious to me. Like, this is not at all a criticism, but I just think it's so funny how one of the most common complaints I hear in anime is like, the characters are written so well except for the, the female characters. And then this show comes along and it's like, why even bother with a female character? Let's just put a muzzle on her. I'm imagining an infomercial for like a writing class. Like, do you struggle bringing female characters to life? Well, worry no more, because for the low, low price of 19.99, we will teach you that the secret to avoiding the trap of having to make good female characters is by gagging them. Opinions. Mm. Nuance. Mm. Subtlety. Mm. Character development. Mm. Focus on your female characters being kawaii as fuck and never have to worry about characterization ever again. Over now and we'll throw in a bonus offer of character sleeps through entire plot arcs bonus chapter. So, Might have told us about him, but that's alright. She's way more kawaii. Back to sleep. <laughs> that is so convenient. <laughs> that is so amazingly convenient. He likes it. Dude, find yourself a bed. You had a long day? A couple days? You can hear this guy, guy coming from a mile away. Haganezuka. That's good service. So does this just give him two awesome swords? So there's an elemental system to people as well. There's so many different things going on at the same time. Magical elements, lots of mythology, very rich. What does it mean? It's not the color I was expecting. Yeah, it's crow! He hasn't been spending any time with it yet. Oh my god, it talks. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually happy about that. Now, give it a personality. We can't write female characters, but maybe we can write crow characters. Work has already begun. 
God, so much has happened so fast. Yeah, for real. First of many. New sword, new abilities. Hey, the crow's here now. <laughs> hey, there you go, that's the personality. It's got spunk, I like it. Well, bring it on, you little So in just five episodes, we've gone from Tanjiro being family man, mayor of his village, helping everyone with their problems kid, to full-fledged demon slayer, with a demon sister sidekick, a badass sword, and a crow. And at every turn, these new mythological elements. It's really weird, but watching him sort of ascend to this position, it's exciting, but it's also sad. Like, this is just his life now. Because of the extreme nature of the work, I feel like that's a great way to go crazy. Because it's stress and trauma, you know? I think the only people who survive that kind of thing are people with a very, very clear reason to keep going. Something concrete to imagine that makes her struggle worth it. For example, a very clear endpoint. Like, oh, when I make it to this point, I'm done. Or a desired result that this will bring you to. Imagining the sweetness of that result can get you through the, the difficulty. Enjoying the thing itself, of course, would do it. There are a bunch of different things that meet that criteria, but having none of them is sort of a recipe for disaster, I think. And the existential danger for Tanjiro is that he does have one, right? It's turning his sister back to human form, but I feel like it doesn't really work in that role because there's no guarantee at all that this kind of work will bring him any closer to that goal, except perhaps in the sense that he will get a better sense of whether or not it's possible as he proceeds. So there's a lot of strength in his character already, just meeting this head on with no guarantee. You know, and every demon he kills is probably a reminder of how futile seeming it is, yet he keeps going forward. So I'm very interested to see what it'll be like when he actually starts the journey. And I also feel like there will be a major, major turning point when some of the characters that I believe we've seen a bit of already end up joining together in what feels like a crew.